Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Lord is in the midst of his people who we are. Yes, let's put our hands together and praise him one more time. I can do it all day long, but I know there are those who need to go to work. <laughs> but then this is my work as well. Isn't it wonderful that God has called some of us to be workers of what we really enjoy doing? Amen. And then there are some others. Work is, uh, is a drudgery and, and it's hard. And we pray that God will give you grace yes. to go through that. But soon it will all be over. It will all be over. Thank you to George pastors with the name George. You know how did <laughs> one from the Middle East and one from Bangalore, but both from Kerala. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord and ministering the word to us. And uh, Pastor TV George's sons, their names been mentioned here. Freddie, where are you? Yes. Would you take a minute or two and just greet the folks? I, another time. I know we would rather have you preach, but, uh, but uh, you kind of biked out of that. So, Thank you, Pastor. Yes. It's great to be here this morning to worship with each one of you saints. Lord, uh, indeed, I've been here before, and uh, you know, it's so nice to see each one of you just uh, giving glory to God, and uh, for us as a family as well to come and rejoice with each of you that are here in the Lakeland area. Of course, uh, I've got my brother-in-laws with me as well. Uh, you know, uh, Sajian family and also Finian family are here as well. Uh, we were sort of concluding our summer uh, vacations and it was, uh, it was good that we came and visited mom and dad and of course Mani uncle also came by from uh, Houston. So it's indeed uh, a great time to worship with Amichi and Appleton as well. And obviously uh, this church is uh, dear to us and uh, we thank you for your prayers and uh, Pastor, we're uh, waiting uh, to hear from what the Lord has uh, laid upon your heart this morning. And again, um, just want to give uh, glory to all glory to God for what he's been doing in our lives and uh, in each of your lives as well. God bless each one of you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome anytime. Next time, come prepared to share the word also. Okay. Thank you. Now, the service is not over until the service is over. Did everybody hear that? Okay, at the end, I believe, Jibu, you are going to have a couple of announcements, uh, and uh, Binu, you may have a couple of announcements. It's important that the church family know what is going on, and uh, I appreciate the team who are working with the audio, visual, and everything. We will try to have as many announcements as possible on the screen in the coming weeks because hopefully that will save us some time. Amen? All right, let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 2 to begin with. Here for the last few weeks we've been studying essentials for Christian growth. Essentials for Christian growth. Should we have a very fast, quick review? First of all, we said a person became a Christian by being born. Everybody? Is that everybody? Come on. A person became a Christian, a child of God, by being born. Oh, thank you. That's more like it. And don't be afraid of that. And I will continue to repeat that. Because, again, unfortunately... <sighs> It is not being emphasized enough. You must be born again. You must be alive in Christ to grow in Christ. Okay. And so after being born alive, what is the first essential element we need for growth? 
Oxygen. Oxygen, everybody. Oxygen. I know it is repetition, but that's all right. Oxygen. What is spiritual oxygen? The Holy Spirit is spiritual oxygen. We are not to be dry, dead bones. We are to have the wind of God blowing into us. And you will hear me repeating this again and again and again. Okay, so what else do we need? We need oxygen for growth, spiritual oxygen. Then what else do we need? We need the pure milk of the of the word of God. I am not going to ask you to raise your hands if you are taking notes. Maybe I should ask those who are not taking notes. No, I am not going to do that. <laughs> Please, bring your notebooks. You can buy one for 99 cents, maybe even less. Yeah. And bring your pen. Write, write this down. And it will help you. Okay? So the pure milk of the word of God. And as we receive the pure milk, which is the word of God, Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, for the milk to be effective, we need to get rid of certain malices, cheating, lying, deception. Servant of the Lord spoke about the works of the flesh from Galatians chapter 5 beginning with verse 19. Anybody remember that? That was just a few minutes ago. We need to get rid of those things. And in the Old Testament it was called circumcision. Circumcision of the flesh. In Romans chapter 2 we read that he who is circumcised in the flesh is not a true seed of Abraham, but he who is circumcised in the heart. Get rid of those evil, lying, cheating, deception, unholy anger. Hello? Yeah. And there is a, uh, the reason I said unholy anger, there is a holy anger. It's called the righteous wrath. Yeah. We should get angry at the devil. I tell you what, we will be much stronger as people of God if we get mad at the devil. We kind of play along. You know, he's okay. I'm telling you, he is not okay. He's the enemy of your father. He's the enemy of your big brother. And he is your enemy. Don't play with him. Get rid of the works of darkness, of evil, all of that. And we need to try hard to do that. Today and last Sunday, we talked about a very essential. So milk, then uh, we also talked about solid food and meat. You all remember that, right? The writer of Hebrews was writing, some of you have been Christians for so long, you have so many years, but you are still what? You are still babies. You still need somebody to... Uh, okay, baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, one of the Sundays before this series is over, we will look at some of the signs of childishness and one of the, some of the signs of maturity. You know. So I'm not going to take time for that today. And then last Sunday, we talked about, you know, we can do all of this, but if a person don't get exercise, what will happen? If we don't get exercise, what will happen? Friends been calling me, uh, brothers from the several of them been talking to me, Pastor, are you getting out and exercising? <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, you know. <laughs> I don't know, they think I am physically unfit or what. But I tell you one thing, I couldn't put these buttons together when I came to Lakeland. 
but now I can. And I think it's a healthy sign, isn't it? It's a healthy sign. It's a healthy sign. So what do we need? We need spiritual exercise. And the spiritual exercise we specifically talked about last Sunday was worshipping the Lord God Jehovah. Worship. Work is to be worship. Our life is to be worship. Worship is to be everywhere all the time. But... With all of that, there has to be special times and seasons and days set apart to worship King Eternal. Oh. Who? Worship who? King Eternal! King of kings and Lord of lords. And what I said last Sunday, I repeat again. My heavenly father, Lord God Jehovah, is a worship hungry God. He doesn't need your worship. But it's for your sakes that he has given you the privilege to worship him. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord in the holiness of God. Worship him in truth and in spirit. We talked about that. Yeah. The Samaritan woman. By the way, let me just throw this in. What was her name? Well, that's another sermon. I have a <laughs> I'll just throw in a little bit. The name of the Samaritan woman. The name of the girl who talked to Naaman's wife. The name of the boy who gave five loaves and two fishes. This is your homework, okay? All right? When you find them, please let me know. You can text or email or call or whatever. Let me know. I'll just leave it at that and wait for the sermon. I thought I would just appet whet your appetite a little bit. So today, after worship, we are going to talk about another spiritual exercise that is essential for Christian growth, which is called, you have the outline? Did I give it to you? I cannot even remember, I know. Jibu, I think I gave it to you. Did I give it to you on a pen drive? Okay, it's coming. All right, good, 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 good. Yeah, too many things to remember. I know my wife gave it to me, and I thought I gave it to them this morning. So you can follow. Extremely important, essential exercise for Christian growth is another is fellowship everybody say fellowship, fellowship. I think some people don't seem to know the meaning of the word everybody it will be good to catch on okay okay let's try that one more time come on one more time fellowship what is that the Greek word for fellowship is what koinonia now I know usually uh, after some special services or something we will say uh, everybody is invited to the fellowship hall I tell you my brother my sister if you haven't had fellowship here you may have donuts and coffee there, but you will not have fellowship. You may have mutton biryani, but you will not have fellowship. Fellowship starts right here. Hello? Fellowship starts right here. Yes. Christian fellowship, I repeat, is extremely essential for Christian growth into maturity. Try to grow up alone. You will find yourself, like I said last Sunday, dried up like a what? You remember the illustration I used? Dried up like what? A prune. 
And you don't want to be a prone Christian. You want to be a pure Christian. A holy, set apart, sanctified child of God. And what is the meaning of the word koidonia? It is not just a simple participation, communion, partnership, contribution, and fellowship. We don't have time to look into a lots of references. Greek philosophers use the word koinonia, hoping to establish a harmonious, united world kingdom. That's how they used it. But were the Greek able to establish that? No. no. Then, after World War I, there was an organization, uh, rulers of the world came together and put together an organiza uh, organization, called, uh, called it uh, United Nations, or UNO, UNO, wasn't there another one before UNO? Thank you, thank you, yes. The first one was, after the First World War, was League of Nations. If League of Nations, this is not in my, I tell you, you guys are still doing good. When I look at your faces, so many things that's not in my outline and my, in my notes just come to me. Because you guys are hungry for the truth. And again, sincerely, I compliment you. It make it much easier for a servant of the Lord to break the bread. So give yourself a clap. Yeah, go ahead. Come on. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, our Heavenly Father won't get angry at that. Not at all. League of Nations did not bring harmony between nations. What is the proof? Second World War. So, after Second World War, another organization came, that was UNO, United Nations Organizations. Guess what? There probably were more wars in the world since Second World War than in the entire history up to that point. People just can't get along. Fellowship. It's not easy. You think it's easy for God to love me? Uh, maybe me, but how about you? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean the other way. You know. <laughs> Fellowship. How can two walk together unless they? Agree. Unless they agree. Yes. Okay. Talking about fellowship, let me put it out there. Again, it's not in the notes. We don't, as the people of God, as the children of God, children of one father, we don't have to agree on every nitty gritty to have fellowship. Amen. Hello? Amen. Yeah. My brother who was in uh, Liberia, would you please stand for a minute? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Libya, thank you. Yeah. He can come and preach here with an open collar, no tie. Uh, he's smart. Because Florida is hot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But you know, there are some churches, if you show up like this, you won't preach here. Of course, you know, Jesus had a tie and a suit. Hello? <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead and sit. <laughs> Grow up and get over it. Right. Fellowship is not on the basis of culture. Fellowship is on the basis of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. If you believe that, you can praise his holy name. That is the foundation of our fellowship. Now, <laughs> daddy was a preacher. When I was three years old, this is, I don't remember, but I was told. <laughs> I wanted a juba shirt like daddy. Apachan wore juba shirt Sunday morning, so I wanted to wear juba shirt, white juba shirt. 
no caller, you know. So <laughs> I would go and sit next to Apachan Sunday morning when I was three, four years old. I don't remember it, but my mom and dad told me this. And I still like to wear white shirt when I am preaching. Of course, the Bible teaches that, right? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I'm not going to mention any, any names. Some people been working on me and praying for me. Get over it. You don't have to be wearing a white shirt to be a man of God. Because you go to a cemetery, there are, Jesus said, there are white washed sepulchers, tombs, but inside is what? Don't dig it up because it stinks. Yes, our clothing when we come to worship the Lord need to be honoring to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Because we are at the feet of our Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But we don't have to all wear the same color of shirt, the same color of saris, do the hair the same way. Everybody, my goodness, you know. Some of you that noticed my hair last week, of course, I am more holier and closer to God this Sunday. <laughs> Those are not the issues that establishes our fellowship. Our fellowship with each other is based on our fellowship with our Father in heaven. Who has got the microphone? Who has got the scripture? First John chapter 1. Read verse 3. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Who has it? That we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And that you also may have fellowship with us. Apostle John is writing, we are writing this to you so that you may have fellowship with us. Okay, and keep on. And that you also may have fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Okay. So that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with whom? The with the Father and with the Son. So if you have fellowship with the Father and Son, by the way, did I explain what fellowship is? Yes, I did. Briefly, I did. Okay. It's togetherness, not externally, and we will come to that. If you have fellowship with the Father, and I have fellowship with the Father, then we are to have fellowship together. It's called vertical relationship as well as horizontal relationship. What do we get? We get the cross. Up and down and across. Are you all with me? There are so many Christians, oh boy, I tell you. <laughs> Some of them are like Elijah. There was a day that Elijah thought, oh my goodness, I am the only one left. Everybody else is backslidden. And what did Jehovah God tell Elijah? Do you remember? Huh? How many? <laughs> Elijah was having a pity party. Everybody else is backslidden. They are all gone. They are all serving Baal and all of that. And Jehovah God spoke and said, Let me tell you, buddy. Let me tell you, kid. What do you know? There are 7,000 just like you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I am not saying that they are all 
fireballs like Elijah, but they, I'm not saying that they all temperamented like Elijah, but they were all holy men of God who loved and worshipped the one and only God. His name is Jehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Fellowship. Okay, bring the outline. Bring the outline. So fellowship is based on our relationship with God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me say fellowship. Let me tell you what fellowship is not. Are the children ready? Where are they? I was supposed to have chil some children here. Oh, they are practicing. Oh, money? Oh, okay, come on up. You have anybody with you? Okay, come on up. Okay. I, these kids are, hopefully they are going to show you what fellowship is not. Okay? Okay. Okay. Can you put the camera over here? Can you move over a little bit from the speaker? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look at what these two are going to do. Okay, you want to tell what you are doing? Okay. What are, what are you doing? Dump it. Dump it. Dump it. Go ahead and dump it. What are you doing? I'm building. You are building. Oh, okay. Okay, what are you building? Something. Okay, look at these two guys. They, they're both handsome. Right? Get a little more closer. Okay. 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 They're both handsome. They're both good kids. Hello? Yes. Okay. Okay. Somebody is supposed to give them the training. You want to do that again? The idea was they are buddies. One is to be building with that block, and the other, they sit together, they smile together, they laugh together, you know, all of that. What one is trying to build, and what did the other one do? He tried to knock it down. Does that ever happen in the body of Christ? You can go. You can go. Because of the lack of time. My time is running out. I like you to think. Does that ever happen in the body of Christ? Hmm? We externally we do a lot of things together we smile we laugh we shake hand we even hug and say oh how are you brother all of that but then inside how can I tear it down how can I tear it down I tell you what if anybody tried to tear down what Jesus is building they are in big, big, big trouble. So, fellowship doesn't mean looking alike, talking alike, smiling alike. Fellowship means one-heartedness. Unity, not just externally, but internal unity. When rubber what do the Americans say? When rubber hits the road, that's when you really find out who is on the Lord's side Amen. and who is building the church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is the place of fellowship. Whenever the doors of these buildings are open, I encourage every one of you, if you are not employed and if you are able to get out and drive or get a ride, please come. Please come. Let's pray together. Let's study together. Let's worship together. Let's put away our petty differences. Huh? Fellowship is based on what? On our relationship with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ, is what I said. And fellowship is not external, all of these things. I don't have time to go into all the scriptures and all the points I have. 
God willing, we will have detailed studies of this. But I tell you what, I repeat, Christian fellowship is essential. Another way, practical way of having fellowship is, thank God for not only phones, but cell phones. Somebody is not in church. I repeat, Christianity is practical. Christianity is practical. Second point, but fellowship is not. Go to the third point. Let me go run through this. Fellowship is essential. Okay. Acts 2 and 42 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 16, we talk about the communion and Paul is saying, this is the breaking of the bread together is an external evidence of our internal unity. A bread is made out of one grain of wheat? No. Many, many, many grains of wheat come together. How does it come together? For it to come together, it needs to be ground up. It needs to become powdered. Hello? If any wheat of grain decides to stay alone, it will never become part of a bread. Did you hear me? I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> If you don't want to give, if you are not willing to be ground up, you will never become part of that bread. That can satisfy so many. You want to stay as a little grain or you want to become part of the, part of the bread. And those who have fellowship with each other in the family of God, we are not to have fellowship with the world. It's called unequally. It's amazing how many people have, and I do, family counseling, marriage counseling. Oftentimes it's, sorry, oftentimes it's the ladies. And men are not any better. When they come to me, I'll ask them, how long have you been going together? You know, they'll come and ask me, would you marry us? I'll tell them, sure, come. I will marry you. But I like to know you. I like to know him. I like to find out, are you, walk, are you both walking together to the same direction? Huh? Or are one is going this way and the other is going this way? It's amazing how many girls say, but have you asked when did he receive Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior? But pastor, I am going to win him to Jesus. And the, there is a name for that in America. You know what it's called? Missionary dating. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's amazing how many telephone calls I have got. And I refuse to marry them. They will go somewhere and get married. And then six months. Oh, Pastor, I should have listened to you. <laughs> our life is miserable. It's our family is a hell. I want to tell her, I told you. You know, but that's not Christ-likeness. <laughs> you know. So I don't do that. So I tell them, well, honey, you got what you asked for? You went out of the will of God? Amen. It's not the color. It's not the language. It's not the culture. That is the primary thing. The primary thing when it comes to unity and fellowship and oneness, whether it be church or family, it is relationship with Jesus Christ as the only Lord and Savior. I don't have time. Believers ought not to have fellowship with non-believers and the reference is given there. Those who have such fellowship should not walk in where? Should not walk in? Darkness. Why? Because darkness have no relationship with light. When we come here in the morning, uh, it's dark in the building. But guess what? As soon as we flip the light on, darkness flees. Saturate your soul, your mind, your spirit with the word of God. 
Jesus is the word of God and Jesus is the light of the world. Fill your kitchen, your bedroom, your bathroom, your closet, your entire house saturated with Christian music. Amen. Are you hearing me? Christian music that exalts the name of the Lord. You can have fellowship in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your living room, everywhere with Jesus. But then, that don't just stop there, I repeat, come together. Come together to have fellowship with each other. I could have had another illustration, but you all know how hard it is to break one tiny stick that's about this thick. A dry stick that's about this thick. How hard is it to break one of that? It's not very hard. It's pretty easy. But you put a whole bunch of them together, tie it together, a whole bunch of them. Let's say 100. How easy is it to break? Hmm? Is it easy? No. Why? Because so many weaklings, and we are weak in ourselves, so many weaklings come together in the unity of Christ and when we stand together fellowshipping with each other strengthening each other hugging and embracing and listening to the concerns of each other eh? weeping together crying together laughing together practical, practical, practical let Christian life become practical Amen. <laughs> Pick up the phone and call somebody this week. Encourage them and say, hey, we are in it together. You will not walk this journey alone. We will walk together to glory because Papa and his son and the Holy Spirit is waiting, waiting for us to get home. And together, as we walk together, let us not forget there is a world out there that is lost and dying. If the devil can keep the church busy, disagreeing on petty things, then we will be too busy fighting with each other. We will not be out fighting the devil in the lost world. So, let's stand on our feet. Fellowship not only strengthens us, fellowship encourages us, enables us, empowers us to reach a lost and dying world. And that's what it is all about. Yeah. Musicians, where are you? Do you know that chorus? We are one in the spirit, we are one in the Lord. No? Well, we'll have to get together. You know, yeah. We will do. We will do. <laughs> Look at the person next to you. I was hoping to get you out of here before 12.30, but I'm still working on it. It will happen. Look at the person next to you. Look at the person next to you. Pastor Roy, can you come up here? Since I don't have anybody next to you. Well, that's okay. You can come up here. And look at the person next to you, please. Take their hand. Give them a smile. And guess what? I said we will have the hugging at the end. Give a good hug. Hallelujah. 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 Play something. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. The service is not done. We haven't prayed and said the benediction yet. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, fellowship, 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 yeah. So what if they, if they wear a different cologne than what you are used to? That's okay, you will get over it, you will get over it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. each other and together we will go forward for the glory of God. We will put aside petty differences. 